Hey what's up guys welcome to part 9 of the tessellation series now in this video I'm going to go over the basic concepts of tessellation using a hexagon shape now here on the screen I have already drawn a regular hexagon and by regular I mean that all the sides are of the same length and all of the internal angles are of the same measurement and it is very important that we use a regular hexagon not an irregular hexagon so by definition an irregular hexagon will be any of the six sided figure which, which means that the lengths of all sides are not equal in length which means that the angles will also not be in equal measurement. We need a regular hexagon and uh, the three methods of tessellation that we discussed in previous videos in this series are the translation, reflection and the rotation. Only the rotational method is going to work on a hexagon shape. So in order to understand that we need to label these sides. So currently you can see that we have six sides but for the rotational method we are going to label the three sides. So the, let's say this one is A. The next region side we are going to leave it blank and the third side will be B. Again the next adjacent side will be blank and then there will be a side C and the last side will also be blank. So in this way we are going to label any of the three sides by skipping one which is adjacent to the one which we have just labeled. So this is the concept. Now in order to understand the rotational method I am going to roughly draw something. So in the rotation what we are going to do is when we are going to cut any part here from this side let's say from this A side and then rotate it here on side that is adjacent to A which is blank. Similarly we are going to cut any part let's say from this B side and then rotate it here on its adjacent side this one. And the same is the case with the C we are going to cut any part from here and rotate it to its adjacent side. Now in order to save time I have already cut the parts and you can see it here. It is the same hexagon shape but I have cut parts from the side A B and C and uh, colored it slightly different. Now in order to make you understand that it fits perfectly let's just work on it and rotate it. So I'm going to use this one and ungroup it. Now as I have already discussed we are going to choose this side cut any part from it and rotate it on its adjacent side which is this one which is currently blank. You can name it as A negative or A plus and the you know other side to be B plus or B negative that totally depends upon you but I just want to keep it blank. So then I'm going to use this black arrow tool at the top I'm going to select that option and make sure that target area here is at this corner because we are going to rotate it around this axis. Now it is not really necessary that you need to rotate it towards this vertical side you need you can rotate it on the other side because the other adjacent side is also blank but if you rotate it on the other side the C will be rotated towards the downward and the B will be rotated along this vertical axis so this is something that you need to keep in mind you do not have to you know make it fixed on one side now I'm going to rotate it and as soon as it snaps on the other side I'm going to leave it like that here same is the case with this B side I'm going to rotate it along this axis and then I'm going to snap it here on the other side and the same thing goes for the side C and this way we are going to get a shape and um, then I think I do not need these labels anymore so I'm going to hide it so this is the basic tile that we get and this is perfectly you can say f going to fit with each other and uh, you know make our whole document completely seamless let me show you what i mean so if i bring back the original hexagon shape here and uh, you know let's just put all these shapes inside that hexagon shape and uh, let's just make this one a symbol so that we can easily modify it later on so now i'm going to rotate it along this axis and why i have chosen this axis the reason is that when I rotated this side A, when I rotated it, I rotated it along this axis. I didn't rotate it along the top axis. If I would have rotated it 
along this top side along this corner i would have chosen this target you know icon or this target you know shape to be at the top axis but as i have chosen this side for the rotation so i'm going to put a target here on this uh, corner and then i'm going to create a copy of this one and then rotate it like that and as soon as it fits or snaps i'm going to leave it like that and i can press ctrl g once again to fit it at the top side now i'm going to select this or you can say the first one the first shape and i'm now going to use this this corner here and the reason i'm using this corner now because i have cut the parts from this side c this side and i rotated it if you remember i rotated it along this top side here not on the bottom side that is why when i rotated it along this corner so i need to choose this corner for rotation and then again i'm going to press ctrl j to copy it and i can now rotate it like that that is also fine and i can rotate it like that as well it does not really matter because we are going to press ctrl j again to fill the other side as well now let me show you that these tiles fit perfectly i'm going to bring the shapes outside of that curve here and hide that curve now you can see that they are fitting perfectly there is no white gap if i just zoom in you can see that there is no white gap between these tiles and in this way they are going to fill the rest of the document and we are going to create a perfect tessellation using a hexagon shape now guys in our next video we are going to use this same concept to create an actual tessellation using a hexagon shape so if you are interested in that make sure that you subscribe to this channel and don't forget to press that bell icon so that you do not miss the notification for my next video and hopefully i'll see you there and take care